lift your hands, open up your mouth, and worship Him. There's no restraint. Lift up a song of thanksgiving. Lift up praise and adoration to Him. He alone is worthy. There's no one like Him. Truly none to be compared with Him. Open up your mouth. He wants to hear you. He wants to hear you. He wants to hear you. Just in the next 60 seconds, while they play, I'd like you to open up your mouth. Give God all the praise. Give God all the worship that you can. Worship till you have no more words. Worship till you have no more language. Sing in other tongues. Sing in your understanding. Come on, somebody. Raise your voice, raise your voice. You get the glory. Lord, we thank you from the depth of our hearts. We raise a sound of thanksgiving, of praise and adoration to you. In the midst of the good and the bad times, you are faithful. You are faithful. You have been so good, truly. Like your servant son, you have been so good. You have been so good. When we think about where you have brought us to, when we think about what you have taken us through, we have every cause to testify of your goodness. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Can you wave your hands and just honor him this afternoon? Bless him. Those following online, just participate in the service. Join the worship tonight. We love you, Jesus. Wave your hands and give him praise. Bless you, Jesus. No one else like you. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, tonight we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, that your name will be glorified here. I pray that your word will come forth with power, with wisdom. I pray, Lord, that as your word comes forth, let your presence saturate this place. And even to those following online, as a testament and a testimony to the ministry of your word confirm your word with signs and wonders let the sick be healed tonight let the oppressed be set free let your joy unspeakable overflow in our hearts and let your people be blessed tonight and let your name be exalted in jesus precious name we pray before we sit down i want us to just raise a prayer of intercession just for about two three minutes and then we'll, we'll sit down to hear the word tonight god is going to do awesome things this evening and i want to appreciate every one of us for coming i like us to just lift up our nation in prayers this afternoon 
the situation of insecurity has gotten out of hand it's obvious that we are contending with forces that are way beyond the physical please bring it down a little so they can hear me and um, it is important that as the body of christ as a fraction of the body of christ i'm speaking both to us that are here and to those that are following online from whatever state or whatever country it is important that as a fraction of the body of christ we are concerned about the state of our territory we are concerned about the state of our nation and that we always raise our voice in intercession for god to intervene we have to pray um the last week i think it was last week or last two weeks there was there were a series of attacks in kaduna state we had about the attack at the airport and then there was an attack at the train and you know military experts will tell you that to attack a moving train you need guts and more than that you need intelligence and then if that is not enough recently they attacked a military base and if you are current enough with information you know that Kaduna is like the, the, the arsenal of Nigeria's military base, or Nigeria's military strength. So I think it's a statement that these people are trying to make to us. And it is important that we pray. Otherwise, if we don't pray and this continues, I'm afraid that there may not be a peaceful Nigeria for the elections to hold. I told you that the enemy is very interested in the next elections. And if he cannot stop the hand of God from prevailing he will try to make sure there is no election so we have to pray we have to be concerned and we have to raise our voice and say enough is enough there is a blood sucking beast raging over this country looking for blood looking for lives and it will not be your life in the name of Jesus but we have to pray and particularly we are going to lift up the state of Kaduna. We are going to ask the Lord to have mercy on that state and to bring deliverance. We are putting an end to bloodshed. And whoever is behind these this bandits, terrorists, enemies of peace, let them and those that are behind them be confounded, be put to shame and be brought to the judgment of God. In the name of Jesus. In the next two, three minutes, can you lift your voice? Raise a cry. Let's lift our voice and pray. Let's lift our voice and pray for Nigeria, particularly for the state of Kaduna. Let's pray. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask the Lord for mercy. And by his mercies, let an end come to bloodshed. Let there be an end to terrorism. Are you praying? You don't have to wait till it comes to you. We are saying enough is enough. We say no to bloodshed. We say no to the killing. We say no to terrorism. We lift up Kaduna State as a point of contact to every State, every of the 36 states in this federation, we raise a cry on behalf of the body of Christ. We say no, we say no. Let the adversary be brought to judgment. Let the hand of the Lord's judgment arise against the adversary, arise against the enemy. Let these punches, these terrorists, these enemies of peace, and whoever is sponsoring them. Be brought to justice. Let them be confounded, be dismayed, and disgraced. Are you praying at all? Rabbi, 
Finally, I want us to pray and bring judgment by the hand of God against every enemy of peace in this nation. I don't care whoever they are. Listen, when you see a toll of insecurity consistently in so much that the government looks incapacitated, then there are people involved. We are not going to mention names, but anyone that is behind terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, killing of any kind, this year, let the judgment of God come upon them. Amen. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Is it to execute judgment? This honor has all the things. Lift your voice and pray. We release divine judgment against the enemy of peace, against the enemies of this nation, of this nation, Nigeria. Everyone behind terrorism. Name we pray. Amen. Finally, I'm going to pray and secure everyone connected to you, whether relative, friends, or families wherever they are around the 36 states of this federation listen to me we are in a season of passover easter is next week and i want you to know that the passover lamb was slain jesus christ so that he will redeem us from death therefore death has no place over us you are going to pray on the strength of that revelation and secure by the blood of jesus everyone that is connected to you wherever they are whether they are traveling by road or by air, whether they are in the villages or in the cities, secure them by the blood of Jesus. Secure them by the blood of Jesus. No evil shall touch them. No plague shall come near their dwelling. For he shall give his angels a charge. Name we pray. Amen. Amen. Finally, I want you to rebuke the spirit of death out of this territory, out of your family. Every projection from the kingdom of darkness to kill or to slay a life, we rebuke and we reject. 
we cancel every sentence of death if there is anyone connected to you that is sick we send the healing power of God to them right now are you praying are you praying the Bible declares unto God belongs to escape from death declare that they are secure we put the spirit of death we cast you out of this territory out of our name we have prayed amen if you believe the lord has heard you can you shout a bigger amen please shake the hands of somebody by your side welcome them to pneumatic give them a warm greeting it's so good to see you in the presence of god again you may take your seat in the presence of the lord hallelujah i said hallelujah Amen. hallelujah means praise the lord hallelujah Amen. are we ready tonight i trust god for an encounter for every one of us it's good to see every one of us here um, coming week after week the sacrifice of coming to spend time in the presence of god to hear the word of the lord that comes to edify and to build us please can you just celebrate yourself <laughs> hallelujah it's not easy coming every sunday amen is it easy you know having to sacrifice every of your sunday to be here and i want to assure you that god is building us god is raising a mighty army in this place and also i want us to celebrate those who are following online i know that there are people all over Nigeria and beyond is that the best you can do for them you have to encourage them better amen I want to thank every of our online follower um, you know we're living in a digital and a visual age and um, we are yet to start our video live stream so it becomes very difficult for somebody to just follow via radio alone um, or via social media so everyone following us online from every part of this nation we appreciate and we acknowledge your presence we are one with you in spirit and we trust God that the same experiences from here is transmitted to your very homes or wherever it is that you are um, whether in Nigeria or outside Nigeria whatever time zone you are listening from or you are following from we love you we appreciate you and um, I would like to also say that you can do well to give us a feedback maybe make a comment on our Facebook page or just give us a feedback through any of the platforms tell us where you are following from we love you and we want to continually reach out to you and keep praying for you in the name of Jesus and um, we bless the Lord for what he will do tonight in Jesus name uh, before we go to the word tonight I want to say something um, as regards what the Lord is doing in Nigeria I want to let you know that indeed I told us from last year that we are in a season of a uh, of 2022 was going to be a season of divine judgment and 2022 was going to be a season of spiritual warfare now, if there is war in the heavenlies, there will definitely be war on earth. Amen? So everything that you see happening around is only a reflection of what's happening in the realm of the spirit. That's the reason why this year is so peculiar that we began the year with two nations, you know, at war. And I want us to keep praying for the nation of Ukraine and Russia um, that this war will come to an end. That the lives that have been slain, you know, God will just bring an end to it and um, out of that let revival break forth in the entire continent of Europe do you believe and say amen to that 
and then also in nigeria i know that we are getting into a season of transition 2023 is next year the elections will come i know that um, satan and god is interested in who will rule this nation and who will uh, command the affairs as far as our democracy is concerned and the Bible says that God will not do anything except he reveals it to his servants, the prophet. So I believe that God will always have witnesses planted in a particular, a particular territory, I beg your pardon, um, to give us insight into his plan, into his will. Well enough for us, especially the body of Christ, to, are you with me? To partner with God in prayers and to mobilize carefully to ensure that that which God desires for us, the nation Nigeria will come to pass and I've been giving us by divine providence of revelation I've been giving us prophecies about uh, what to expect concerning the 2023 election and I assure you that I will only speak when God tells me to speak and now the Lord told me to tell us this very soon in not a very short time I told I, I told us that there will be political confusion isn't it i told us there will be surprises and the number of people aspiring for the presidential seat alone is something uh, surprising in itself amen almost every week someone stands up to declare and i am not in favor of any party i'm not in favor of any candidate what i'm doing i was not paid by anybody to do it you have to know that is a risk for me to do what I'm doing. Somebody saw one of our videos online and made a comment. I don't know where the person is from. And was asking for the number of this pastor. By the way, the video, one of it hit over a thousand likes now. And, uh, but we are not doing this because of that. So you should know that I put my life at a risk to say this. But I will say it because this is what the Lord wants us to know. And the body of Christ, particularly, and Nigerians need direction. Otherwise, I'm afraid that we will be moved by sentiments, we'll be deluded, and we may vote the wrong people. This coming election is going to be supernatural. In fact, the people that God has chosen will not look like it. Just the same way when Samuel got to the house of Jesse, after seeing all of Jesse's seven sons and all God rejected them then they called for David who was in the field obviously um, we know from historical perspective and theologians have schools of thought to believe that David was an illegitimate child of Jesse David was not the was not a child of David, uh, Jesse's first wife small wonder why in Psalms 51 David said in sin did my mother conceive me so theologians believe that David was an illegitimate child he was out of wedlock that's why you know his mother wasn't really spoken about and David also didn't have the stature of a king so when David approached Samuel you must imagine he was coming from the sheep fold he'll be dirty he'll be smelling of the sheep that didn't look like a king material and then God spoke to Samuel he said this is the one anointing we need God to speak again in Nigeria I said we need God to speak again because there will be many who will parade themselves as they are already doing now and I have no problem with having a, a healthy ambition but it is time for Nigerians and the world over to understand that divine calling is not only for ministry even in politics, you have to be called to sit on a seat. The Bible says in Romans 8, 29, He who he predestined, them he foreknew. And he who he foreknew, them he called. For a man to be called to sit in a seat of power and authority, you should know that before he was formed in his mother's womb, God had created and designed him for a time and that's the reason why we need to take away sentence we need direction and i pray the direction will not be 
that God will give, I pray that the quarters that the direction will come from or the, the quarters where the witnesses will come from will not be neglected for lack of popularity. Do we understand what I'm saying? Because you don't have to be popular to be used by God. Yes, we know that influence is given by God. But God told Elijah, when Elijah was at, at his wit's end, God said, I have 7,000 others. We never knew their names till today. But God had this testimony of them that they had not bowed to bow or kissed him in worship. So Nigerians need to seek God. We need to return to God more than ever before in this season. We need to raise a cry of intercession, a cry for mercy, for God to intervene and for God to show us the path that will take us to the promised land. And so this week the Lord told me, soon you will hear on the news one of the presidential aspirants withdraw from the race. And it's going to shock many people. You will see it. It's going to be a headline on the news very soon. It says, so, so, so presidential aspirant has withdrawn from the presidential race. This is somebody that will be popular. It will shock people. But let not your heart be troubled. What God is doing is, God is actually, um, you know, the wisdom of God, you cannot understand it. God is working behind the scenes and before the scenes. Amen? I want us to pray. I'm not wishing. But there's one of the aspirants that may lose his life. I said him, so that you will not say he's a... I said him. I'm not praying for that, but let the will of God be done. There's been the spirit of death hovering on one. I won't mention the name. Generally, let's just pray. But I see death coming for one of the aspirants. So you are going to see it. You are going to hear it on news and it's going to be on the headlines that a particular presidential aspirant who is very popular will withdraw from the race. And for now, I can't tell you if it's time for this party or that party and all of that. All I can tell you for now is that we have to pray. And I want to say this respectfully to every politician or everyone occupying political position. I want to say this, that please somebody should capture this on phone quickly you know the thing about prophecies is like a cloth it can come on you and it can lift so i want it to go i want it to say it before it lifts I want to say this respectfully to every politician and everyone that is holding a political position. We honor our leaders, we pray for them. I'm not in the party of those who criticize leaders. It's okay to talk about what's happening, but with the mindset of bringing the solution. But I don't criticize any leader publicly. However, it is important that we need to understand that politics is not somebody's game or a family's inheritance politics is god's strategy for governing his people as far as civil authority is concerned and so we must learn to lay our ambitions aside and when it is time when it is time for you to be on the seat know that it is time by god's grace and then run for a seat but if you know that your time is up and God has given you every sign to leave, humbly and respectfully leave. It's a chain. It's not going to be one person that will salvage Nigeria and bring her to a promised land. You can only do what you have or what God has assigned for you to do within your tenure. Because sometimes when attacks come on politicians, 
it's not really because God is fighting them but when you step out of God's will you are porous to attacks so I want to say this boldly to every politician respectfully I know my life is at risk for what I'm doing but you see we are dead before we started this work amen everybody hearing me whether Muslim or Christian God rules over the affairs of Nigeria and we must submit to the will of God and allow him to have his way I'm saying this to Nigerians generally let's keep aside sentiments let's keep aside tribalism religion and all of these things whether it's going to be a Christian or a Muslim that will be the next president of Nigeria it is up to God whoever comes let's support and stand by them and pray for them particularly the church let's learn to pray and intercede for our nations in our different churches God is helping us to build a mighty edifice and great things are happening but we need to be concerned about society the Bible says if the foundation be destroyed Psalms 11 verse 3 if you read it in the living the living Bible translation it says law and order has gone out of place what can the righteous do so we have to be very careful I urge everyone listening and watching to pray let God have his way but watch the news you will hear very soon that a particular presidential aspirant withdrew and that will begin a series of a lot of things some will begin to withdraw some will be attacked all kinds of things will happen but in the midst of that shaking the leader for Nigeria's next democratic face will emerge and God alone will be glorified in Jesus name and I want to say this to anyone as a blogger who will lay hands on this listen very well and don't misrepresent what we have said is that okay and God will help us I'm going to begin a video series very soon 12 signs that God showed me for us to identify Nigeria's next president I can't give you the person's name and picture because that's not allowed in prophecy there are certain things that are only relegated to the hand and the will of God there are areas boundaries that you must set for yourself as a man of God that works in the prophetic not to predict for instance you don't predict somebody's spouse but we can give signs because God speaks through the prophetic in signs and symbols in similitudes like he said in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 12 so I'm going to do a video series very soon 12 signs if you know these 12 signs you can be wise enough to detect I pray that this will help our political franchise I was not paid to do this I'm not supporting any party or any individual I am only speaking as a voice sent by God to his people God will help us in Jesus name can we clap our hands and give the Lord praise? Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels by the redeemed worship you now. Oh. Let's lift our voice and sing it together. The saints and the angels bow. We redeem, worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. Oh. Your presence there is, Lord, expression of your life and revelation of your power and mind. 
Thank you for your presence tonight that has come to testify of your word, to validate the truth of your word. And no life will leave this place the same. Let the weight of your glory be strong in this place. And I pray that you visit everyone in Jesus' name. First Samuel chapter 7 I thought that we have concluded the teaching of priesthood the need for priesthood I thought we had concluded it two Sundays back but within the week the Lord began to encounter me again and laid on my heart something else that I would like to share with us and then we'll pray and I hope that what I will share tonight, we will believe it. It is not in any way to coerce us or to exploit or extort from us. It is to bring us to a point where we become obedient to the word of the Lord. The Bible says that we should not be hearers alone, James chapter 1, deceiving ourselves, but we should be hearers and doers of the Lord word. The need for priesthood, part four. I want us to examine the life of a man today and pick something that I trust will help us in our journey in the kingdom and in our practice of priesthood. The Bible says in First Peter chapter 2, verse 5, that we are lively stones built up into a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God in Christ Jesus in Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 the Bible declares that he has made us unto our God priests and kings and we have been examining what priesthood is all about and every believer has been called into the practice of priesthood I told us that a priest is a mediator an intercessor one that stands between God and man and it is important for us to note that the practice of our priesthood is what determines our dominion and our reign as kings in the earth because our advantage is our ability to understand and manipulate the realm of the supernatural the heavenly realm where God dwells and to bring dominion from that realm to outsource dominion from that realm and to reign on earth priesthood is the function the lifestyle and the calling of every believer and when you begin to hear teachings like this it means that god is interested in maturing his church i like to say that for a while now i believe that god is translating us from blowing up church folks to growing up church folks for a while we have been blowing them up and not growing them blow up is when i come and i give you messages that are enticing to your ears it can get you excited it can get you exhilarated it can get you ju jubilating for a while it can stir you up or stir up your emotions but the question is, does it have contents that will edify and grow you as a member of the body of Christ? And that is what God is interested in doing in this season. So if you have not been with us for a while, I employ that you get the messages. Somehow I know they are on various platforms or you just reach out to the media department after the service to help you to understand what we are going to say tonight first Samuel chapter 7 verse 5 to 10 the presence of God is strong in this place today 
First Samuel chapter 7 verse 5 now this is a situation as it, at, at, at this time the ark of God had been captured Israel was defeated you know the story from first Samuel chapter 4 and 5 Israel was defeated the ark of God was captured taken to the land of the Philistines and then the hand of God was heavy on the Philistines and they sent back the ark of God to Israel but when he got to Israel he remained in a place called Kiriat Jerim. it's actually spelled as Jerim J-E-A-R-I-M but you know in Hebrew J is pronounced as Y Amen that's the reason why the word Jah J-A-H is pronounced as Yah which is a name for God and for 20 years this ark was in that place and it looked like the presence of God had departed from Israel and the Bible says they began to mourn after God they began to cry out for a visitation which is something that we need to do now in this nation which is something we need to do now in our world we need to cry out for revival we need to cry out for divine visitation we need to see God move on our streets on our campuses in our marketplaces even in the church again we need to see and experience the raw power and the presence of God that commands genuine transformation people don't change because you have a good sermon you may as well just inform them they change because of the power component in the word that is released and so the children of Israel began to cry out to God and as at this time Samuel was the judge over Israel from verse 5 and Samuel said gather all Israel to Mizpah Mizpah means watch tower the place where you watch and look out for the enemy so figuratively speaking in a time where they were expecting revival God was asking for the watchmen the intercessors he was calling for the ministry of prayer because before God will begin a new season amongst his people he will release a wind, a wind of prayer that will sweep across his body so that the people of God can gather rally together and call upon God and seek the face of God for him to bring deliverance gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray to the Lord for you let's go on we are reading down to verse 10 so they gathered together at Mizpah drew water and poured it out before the Lord symbolic of spiritual purification and cleansing it was repentance that they were doing they were repenting before God so this was symbolic of spiritual cleansing you know the Bible says he that covereth his sins shall not prosper are you with me the Bible says he that covereth his sins shall not prosper but whosoever confesses and forsake them will have mercy first John chapter 1 it says in verse 7 that if we walk in light as God is in light we have fellowship with the Father and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from every sin so there must be repentance for us to draw close to God and that's what was exemplified in this verse and they fasted that day and said there we have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah go on now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel and when the children of Israel heard of it they were afraid of the Philistines could you be a bit faster please thank you so the children of Israel said to Samuel do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel and the Lord answered him you may need to read verse 9 and verse 10 in the message translation to have a real picture of what happened so the children of Israel were repenting before the Lord praying and seeking God to be restored restore his presence over Israel because it looked like God had abandoned them and I've told you before that if you lose everything in this life except God you didn't lose anything but if you lose God and have everything you lost everything what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and do what 
we need to contend for the presence of God it must be a matter of priority you should feel bad when there is an absence of that tangible presence around your life after a while and so the children of Israel were seeking the face of God and Samuel was with them and the Philistines heard that they were gathered in one place of course they were defenseless and so the Philistines decided to cash in on that advantage and wreak havoc you know and come against the children of Israel and when the children of Israel heard that the Philistines had come in battle array they cried unto Samuel I pray that God will raise Samuels in our generations you know I believe every believer should seek God for themselves but there are some times when you, do, you don't seem to hear God you need somebody that is in tune with heaven and the Bible says Samuel did something the Bible says while Samuel was offering is that okay give us verse 9 and Samuel took a young lamb not yet weaned and offered it as a whole burnt offering to God he prayed fervently to God interceding for who for Israel this you will now understand what happened because if we had read it in King James or New King James you can just say okay Samuel offered the sacrifice and all but the Bible says he sacrificed a lamb now God had instructed them in Deuteronomy 14 21 well, one of the things that they should not do is that they should not kill a young kid that has not been weaned from its mother's milk in other words the young child of a mama of a goat or a sheep that is still sucking you shouldn't kill that child that means you shouldn't use him for sacrifice because burnt offerings were part of the offerings that God required from the children of Israel it was a covenant those sacrifices were a symbol of a covenant that God had with Israel and so every morning and every evening in, in Israel there were sacrifices that ascended unto God and because of those sacrifices God's presence was secured over Israel. Now Samuel, in order to restore divine intervention, because he was in a fix, he was the one who gathered them. If the Philistines had attacked and killed, they would blame him. That you called us to this place. In fact, in our days, they will say he planned with the Philistines. Isn't it? So Samuel was in trouble and he needed... Have you been in a place where you are in trouble and you you there's no time to pray you need god to show up and show up immediately have you been there before and samuel who understood priesthood you must learn to engage the supernatural if you want to be victorious if you want to reign after all is said and done thank god for your skill for your intelligence for your certificate but you must understand the supernatural samuel offered a young lamb that had not been weaned from his mother's milk he took it and offered and i guess that that blood was fresh the incense of that sacrifice went up to God as a fresh blood, as a sacrifice. And the Bible says in verse 10, just when the Philistines thought they would invade and capture Israel, the Bible says God answered by thunder. That means that there are certain answers, certain dimensions of the presence of God that can only be provoked by what? Sacrifice. You will not know that God can answer in a way until you do certain things. Let me, go, let me show you some scriptures. Psalms 81 and verse 7. God thundered. The Bible says he thundered that day. <laughs> he said you called in trouble. And I delivered you. And I did what? I answered you in the secret place of what? Uh -huh. 
Give us a message translation. He said, you call to me in your pain. I got you out of a bad place. I answered you from where the thunder hides. God will answer on somebody's behalf today. By thunder in the name of Jesus. You know, thunder comes first to cause confusion. He said, I answer you from where the thunder. I like New King James. He said, from the secret place. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. If you know that address, you can outsource certain dimensions from God. You can outsource certain weapons that are not common. And I came to tell you that this is not Old Testament. God can still do it today. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today. Many of you are conversant with your scripture. Please be seated, sir. John chapter 18. When they came to arrest Jesus in the garden, he was to be arrested. And they came and they, they, he asked them, Who seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus stepped forward and he said, I am he. The Bible says, if you read your Bible very clear, it said they stepped back and fell to the ground. Notice that Jesus just finished praying. And I told you by my calculation, he had prayed for three hours. Maybe that's the reason why when Judas kissed Jesus, from the time Jesus, Judas kissed Jesus, he started dying. Because after that kiss, he went back, returned the bride and went and hanged himself. Now, this is a digression. Understand that the Bible says this is the way he hanged himself. He fed head down. Not the normal tie to the neck and hang. No. You know what it means to hang yourself? Upside down. That means you have to look for a tree that has long branches. Branches well enough to carry because the weight of a man when he's upside down seems to be more than when he's right side up. You don't dare touch a man that understands the secret place. Judas made a mistake. Kiss Jesus, not knowing Jesus had come out of prayer. That's why the psalmist says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be what? Saved. In the midst of your affliction and your pain, what should you do? Pray. God answered by thunder but he answered like that because of something not because of the prayers of Israel it was because of the sacrifice of Samuel could it be that it had been a long time since that sacrifice ascended to God from Israel where was God when the Philistines came the first time to defeat them I'm teaching you about priesthood today Samuel erected an altar and offered a sacrifice. Psalm 65 from verse 1 and 2. He said, praise verse 1, verse 2 and then verse 7. Or verse 5 rather. He said, praise waited for you in Zion. And unto you shall the vow be performed. He said, O thou that hearest prayer. Unto you shall all flesh come. Then in verse 5 he says, by terrible things in righteousness you will answer us why because a vow was performed are, are you following me by terrible mysterious things why he said for unto you shall the vow a vow is a form of sacrifice too just like the vow that Anna made to God if you give me she had been praying many times and in fact that day she was already praying and it looked like god the heavens were still closed over her until she approached god through the platform of sacrifice if you give me a child i will give him back to you that means i'm ready to go childless if that's the only child you give me all i want is give me an evidence that will end this shame 
You know what it means to give your child out forever? You will know if you have gotten married and given birth. If you have gotten married and you've put to bed one, two, three, and you, are, you clap when people maltreat children, then it's either you are a witch or you are the devil we have been looking for. The pain that it takes for a mother to come... I hope you know that every time a woman enters the labor room, it's life and death. You cannot predict what happens there. Just like we have some pregnant amongst us. And the time will soon come. I hope the husbands are warming up. Don't worry, everyone here, none of you shall cast your young. Your amen needs recharge card. What if she dies while giving birth to Samuel? She said, if you give me a son, I will give him back. And God came. Oh, somebody has been praying all this while. And just so that you know that God is not an extortioner or a robber, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2 that God later gave her five more children. Because there are a lot of people who think God is a, an armed robber. That's the reason why every time God comes to instruct them to do something, Friends, we must understand in our journey in the faith and our practice of priesthood that are, there are times when the only way out or the only way through is by sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. Shout it again. Sacrifice. There are times in life where the only way out and the only way through not, it doesn't matter what you do by that time. There are certain problems, certain fix that it will take a sacrifice from the earth. Not really because God cannot intervene, but you need to understand the justice system of God. Probably what you are dealing with. There are times when the only way out is a sacrifice. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel chapter 24, Okay, let's, let's turn to 2 Kings chapter 3 first. I want to show you another example. And just so that you know, Samuel was a man of sacrifice. You can put it as the subtopic of this part 4. A man of sacrifices. Samuel was a man of sacrifices. Small wonder why God showed up every time for him. Even when he went to anoint David, it was in the guise of a what? A sacrifice. You see, the problem with Saul and David was that the difference between the anointing was in the sacrifice that was behind. For instance, the Bible didn't tell us what Samuel had sacrificed on the high place before Saul met him. But the Bible, however, told us that in 1 Samuel chapter 10, Samuel anointed David with a flask of oil. Alright? And you need to know what a flask is. You know, in those days, there, there were some leaves or some trees that had, you know, I don't know how to prune, I don't know how to put it, but they, they could get, um, they had stems or branches where you could, they were strong enough to be like a, a container to hold something. That's what the Bible means by flask. Or some of these grasses that they used to roof in those days. That's flask. You know, once that touches fire, it can be destroyed, isn't it? Are you following me? But when Saul, when Samuel was to anoint David, the Bible says he took a horn. A horn means a cow must die, a bull must die. Are we together? Maybe that's the reason why David's anointing was stronger. The Bible says God told Samuel in 1 Samuel 15, he said, Take a bull. Or chapter 16, rather. He said, Take a bull. That was the highest sacrifice in Israel. A bull was a burnt offering. Just because you want to anoint one man. How much is a cow? Some cows can be up to 500,000. That's the reason why 
even if you are anointed there is still a limit and a circuit to how far of that anointing you can walk in and there are certain mysteries that the demonic can conjure against you that will limit you with your anointing if you don't understand the sacrifice formula to back up that anointing oh i know this message is not for everybody today and i know yes the will of god sometimes but that's why sometimes some anointed people can die we just lost one of one of the anointed female singers in nigeria because there are times when even the anointing is not enough can be cut off i know somebody will say touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm now that is god's prescription that is god's judgment but you see when satan fights the children of god he fights them with mysteries you know why because we come from a kingdom that is enshrouded in mysteries and while he was still an angel before god he had absorbed mysteries as secrets he had absorbed some of those secrets from god and he knows that the only way you can fight against god's people and get them is when you come with something or you come in a guise that they don't understand witchcraft is one of the mysteries of the kingdom of darkness so you may be anointed but if what is coming against you is a demonic mystery brother your anointing is not enough there are times when the language is sacrifice take it or leave it this night you take it now and it helps you or five ten years from now you will come into a position and you will remember what i'm saying was Saul not anointed when he was killed on the mountain and david cried he said how are the mighty fallen he said why did Saul die as one that was not anointed so david was wise enough he was a man he was a student of samuel remember david was wise enough to understand sacrifices now second samuel 24 let me just go there before we go to second kings david understood you see he learned some things from samuel and that was what helped to secure his reign for 40 years all through his 40 years he fought battles including against his own son but he never lost one even when he sinned against god the army of israel won that battle you want to know why david understood something more than the anointing he knew sacrifice somebody say sacrifice second samuel 24 the story david stood up one day and out of his pride as a king you know sometimes when you get to some positions in life whether you become very wealthy you have money or you you get to a position of power or influence you need god to help you stay humble you don't know who you are until there's 10 million in your account 1 million 100 million as the case may be that's when you will be revealed you know the bible says the heart of man is deceitful above all things desperately wicked he said no one can discern it including the owner of the heart no one including the owner that's why you don't where's your heart I know you will point here that's your physical heart we are talking of the heart that the bible speaks about where is it you don't know that's the reason why you can't even predict your heart because you don't know where it is i feel like i'm talking this evening so you wait say there's six six, six zeros in your account we will now know who you are you, your your heart will be revealed or they call you to a place to pray and prophesy and they present money and you know that this man you want to prophesy on is a witch but because of money say my church my ministry needs this 10 million 15 million that's why it's good to allow god to circumcise your heart now it's not when you get to the top that you start that circumcision ask david that's the reason why he fell from that height read what he said in psalms 51 
the prayer was a prayer of repentance but also regret he never believed that this lost thing followed him many years to catch up with him on the throne so you need to pray every day and present allow god to search he's the only one that knows the position to search and circumcise to circumcise means to cut off the desires of the flesh the nature of sin in you that may make you betray god when you least expect second samuel 24 so some david woke up one day as king he said number all the men in israel i want to know the strength of my army and his commander told him you know joab was a wururu man joab the commander was a wururu man but for the first time joab was speaking truth he said <laughs> he said let god multiply the children of israel and give my lord the king many more soldiers he said but there's no need because he knew god had spoken in the old testament before they got to canaan that israel will not be numbered but will be like a like sand on the seashore it was a law god had given to them in numbers and in deuteronomy when balaam wanted to curse the children of israel so he knew that david was about to err and the story had it that you know david's word prevailed and they numbered the whole men in israel they were up to a million plus and the bible says god sent his prophet to david he said choose out of these three number one punishment number two punishment number three punishment may god, no may god never bring you to that point in jesus name that means god was i thought the prophet would bring good news and if you read first chronicles 21 the same story different account david was already repenting you would think that the prophet would now come and say okay god because you have repented god god said no i must punish you for this one say choose out of the three and the bible says a plague hit israel and in three days 70 something thousand men were killed in three days what kind of genocide was that now the bible tells us that the angel was on his way to jerusalem but god stopped the angel and the bible says the angel stopped at the threshing floor of around her. now that that very threshing floor was where god now later gave david the formula to reverse because this angel of death that has been sent will not stop until he finished killing and then god the prophet told david he said offer a sacrifice here you know why that very threshing floor was on one of the hills that surrounded jerusalem it was historically the same spot that abraham sacrificed isaac in genesis 22 and abraham when god blessed him he called the name of that place jehovah jireh jehovah jireh does not mean the lord shall provide no it means the lord who sees or the mount of the one who sees why because when he got on that place to sacrifice isaac god showed him a, a, a ram and the ram is the male of the sheep family to exchange for 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 isaac because sacrifice is the platform of exchange because that ram was symbolic of jesus christ two thousand years later that would die exchanging himself for the sin of humanity i thought somebody would say amen, amen. same spot abraham was to offer isaac abraham means father of many nations isaac was his son symbolic of god the father that was going to sacrifice his only son and the angel got to the same spot and because sacrifices can be raised as a memorial before god god remembered that spot that a man gave his only son to me and god told the angel he said restrain your hand notice that the bible says god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent of his word in isaiah chapter 55 he said my word goes forth out of my mouth and shall not return void until it's accomplished god had sent the angel the angel was not supposed to come back but the sacrifice of a man god had to change his mind i'm talking about when your sacrifice becomes a memorial 
The Bible says we have been saved to offer up spiritual. Then your sacrifice becomes a memorial before God. A timeless memorial. The Bible says David offered a sacrifice. Now David was very wise. He knew the gravity of his offense. And he knew that it would take a sacrifice that was voluminous enough to counter what had happened. So not only did he buy the place, the man was going to give it to him free. But the Bible says David bought the place and he bought the, 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 you know, the instruments, the, 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 the animal for sacrifice and offered it up to God. And in verse 24 and 25 of 2 Samuel 24, the Bible says, And God heard the prayers of David after he had offered sacrifice and the plague was stopped. There are many families without memorials. There are many families without sacrifice. There are many territories without altars. Why would there be three attacks in one month, in one place? And that's one of the states in the north where you have more population of Christians. God is not looking for many Christians alone. He's looking for many priests. Second Kings chapter 3. I'll give you another story. And then we'll pray. Second Kings chapter 3. The Bible spoke about a time when the king of Israel was to go to war against the king of Moab. And he allied with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. Three kings against one. They called for the prophet Elisha. Verse 17 as Elisha as the minstrel played the hand of god came on elisha look at what he said in verse 18 of second kings chapter 3 elisha began to prophesy the victory prophesy the victory of the children of israel in this battle before they fought he says and this is a simple matter in the sight of the lord he will also no, give us verse 17 because they were already in a place that was dry there was no water so the first prophecy was to attend to the need. You see why you need the prophetic in your life? He said, For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet that that valley shall be filled with water. Prophecy solved the need at hand. Next verse. And then the next need, which was the battle, God told them there will be victory. Just the same way you will not know how water will come, I will fill this whole valley with water. Even so, God would deliver the Moabites into your hand. And they went into battle. And as surely as God had spoken, the children of Israel, Edom, and Judah were winning the war. The battle became very fierce for the king of Moab. And then in verse 26, the Bible told us something that punctuated everything. The Bible says in verse 26, uh, when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he knew he was already losing. He took 700 men that were left-handed that drew swords. In those days, you know, in our days, they have special forces that are trained. For instance, in the Nigerian Navy, there's something they call special boat service. That's, the, that's their own special forces squad. Now, the training of one man, a special boat operator, is equal to 1,000 normal troops. You don't want to know the training they go through. In fact, part of their training is that they will have to walk for 30 kilometers with a heavy sack, endurance test, and little or no water. So in those days, they had their special forces. And in those days, if you were a left-handed man as a warrior, you were a special force. So they trained them in such a way that they could break through and resist any opposition. If the king's army has been defeated and the army of the other nation is against the king and has covered where the king is, those guys can destroy and immobilize the entire army. And the king tried to employ that, but nothing worked. And when he saw that the natural could not work for him, 
he knew that he had to go supernatural now notice that this was the king of moab the same moab that called balaam to curse the children of israel and he could not because god had blessed them and then balaam now advised moab that see if you want to destroy these guys the only thing is lure them to sin let them break their covenant with god then god's divine protection will be removed and you can break in somebody say where was god when this thing happened to me check your covenants check your covenants because many of us don't believe in covenant they say christ has done everything but even jesus practiced covenant one of it was in prayer jesus was given to prayer at specific times that even on the night when he was to be betrayed he prayed the bible says in the next verse i think that's verse 26 now what did the king of moab do the next verse please then he took his eldest son who would have reigned in his place I did a research and I discovered some school of thought. Some theologians believed that that son was his only son. And the Bible says he offered him as a burnt offering. Imagine you tie your only son that will reign after you. Kill him and burn him. Why? Just because you need to win a battle. And look at the end of the verse. The Bible says indignation. All of a sudden the battle turned upside down. God had prophesied that they will win. And the word of God does not go forth and return back void. But somebody sacrifice. You think of it. If it was a, an Israeli king that made that kind of sacrifice. And the battle turned against Israel. Friends, there are moments in life where all you need to fight for you is your sacrifice. On your altar, what has been laid up before God. I'm talking about the altar of your life. I'm talking about the altar of your heart. What is laid up? He said, I beseech you therefore, dearly beloved, that you present yourselves as living sacrifice. What has been laid up before God to attract a covenant between you and God. Or perhaps you are just enjoying the usual grace every believer is enjoying psalms 50 verse 5 he said gather my children to me my saints to me then he specified which saints he didn't say all israel he said those who have made a covenant by sacrifice unto me he didn't say all israel all israel were his chosen nation but among israel there were those who took their covenant you see, you know why it's the word covenant the reason is because <laughs> covenant is the nature of god see <laughs> Covenant means whether it is convenient or not, you stick to the rules of the game. You stick to your part of the bargain. That's why there's a difference between faithfulness and consistency. They are not the same. Consistency means I will keep doing it as long as all the factors are right. As long as I'm well paid, I will keep coming to church to serve. But faithfulness is the nature of God. Whether you pay me or not, I will come. Now, you know, the Bible says, God said in James, He said, you ask, but you ask amiss. James chapter 4, isn't it? He said, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss so that you will spend it on yourself. Asking amiss does not mean that there are certain things God will, cannot do. No. Asking amiss means when your prayer or your request before God does not capture His nature. Because God is faithful. So when God looks at the person praying and he looks at the request, if he doesn't see faithfulness, which is his nature, that is asking amiss. There's no way he can support or bless that, whether they are anointed or not. That's why Sam, Saul, though he was anointed, he went to look for Samuel, thinking he would get help. Samuel told him, you will still die tomorrow. You are coming to join me here. You know why? He asked Amis. He decided to consult through mediums and witchcraft. For God responds to a life, he looks to check his nature. 
and know that God will raise faith. That's why he didn't say, well done, good and consistent servant. He said, well done, good and what? Faithful. I'm asking you tonight before we pray, what sacrifice stands between you and God that can provoke divine intervention in the rainy day? What have you laid up in your life as a memorial that can become a passageway? It can become an air time, a website through which God can come and bless your community, bless your clan. That even when God has no business with your family because of the sins of the fathers and the blood, the innocent blood that they shed, don't think just because you are a Christian, God will suddenly know his laws doesn't change. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the children to the third and fourth generation and by no means slaying the innocent with the wicked but giving mercy to those who fear him that's his nature it doesn't change old and new testament does not change that one so what sacrifice will stand what can God look in your life and say, this is enough to remedy? I'm not just talking about the blood of Jesus. No, that was an example God gave when Jesus died. Revelations 5, the Bible says in verse 9, that you were, what is the lamb? For you were slain, and by your blood you have purchased men. By your blood, by his sacrifice of himself, he was able to redeem mankind. And then in verse 12, look at what he says in that same Revelation 5. He says, What is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches, even wealth, cannot be accessed apart from the platform of sacrifice in the kingdom? I don't care how many new creation realities you know. I don't care if you quote all the I am confession. My, sub, my, my existence is powered by a supply that knows those you may enjoy a little benefit there but i'm talking about wealth with dominion the kind of wealth that abraham had abraham was so wealthy that god gave the entire earth to him melchizedek came to him, he said blessed be abraham of god most high possessor of heaven and earth no wonder when he died even in hell god divided hell into two and gave abraham one plot he said it's called paradise and the Bible didn't tell us the devil jumped from where he was to paradise. A man's sacrifice. No wonder Abraham was wise. When he heard that blessing, he said, I don't need all these material things. The Bible says Abraham gave him a tithe of everything and gave the rest. He said, no, I've gotten something that is beyond the natural. Wealth is spiritual. It's a force. When you have it, you will be like Jacob. He ran away with a staff. But he came back a mighty nation. So you cry too much when people cheat you and collect your 20 naira. Oh, come on. But it's covenant of sacrifice that will take you there. Everywhere God appeared to Abraham, sacrifice. He will raise an altar. Everywhere, sacrifice. Now the Bible says that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, as it is written, Galatians 3.13, Cause is everyone who hung on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham may come to the Gentiles and the promise of the Spirit. The blessing was the promise of the Holy Ghost. But it couldn't come except it navigated through the lineage of Abraham. So even though the blood of Jesus sets us free from the curses of the law, he brought us to become covenant sons and daughters of Abraham. Abraham's blessings are mine. How about Abraham's sacrifice? I'm just telling you why. You See, I know times when I need to pray and God will intervene. And I know issues when it is a sacrifice that will do it. And you see this man standing before you. The only thing that is slim about me is my body. There are weighty sacrifices behind me. It takes the eye of a spirit to see it. Otherwise, you can't do this work we are doing. You go and check the history of revival in Nigeria. How many revivals rose in the north and broke through and were sustained? 
there are special demonic forces over northern nigeria that fights revival so my life is at risk to do this one we'll finish a miracle service all kinds of things happen and we all go back and you don't know what happens there there are even times when i'm going for a meeting after praying for days god will say empty your account empty your account five zeros six zeros i remember the last and i'm saying this with all humility this is not to boast this is all humility i remember the last super sunday when i got to abuja just within two days god had to ransack me of two thousand one hundred dollars and i came back empty but those of you that were in the service you saw what happened this message tonight i'm sorry but i'm blunt take it or leave it but if you want to secure god in your life if you want to be a beneficiary of all that christ's redemption presents to you it will oblige you to listen to this voice that you are hearing now there are certain battles you cannot fight with prayer there are times when you're giving your sacrifice is louder than your prayers he told cornelius he said your prayers and your arms giving has gone up it was not a waste and because of that salvation came to the gentiles what sacrifices will you pay to see the move of god in your generation what sacrifices will you give to bring about an end to the onslaught of darkness i know what we like apostle pray for me apostle bless. recently i was praying for somebody i went somewhere to pray spent hours praying praying for this person and for the first time god spoke to me and god said what have they given you recently i'm saying god spoke to me and this is not i told you from the beginning this is not a preaching to coerce people the spirit of god spoke to me said these people you are crying for what have they given to you recently more like god wants to intervene but it will be the grace he has on his servant that they have to connect to by sacrifice when we preach these things i know that there are fake pastors who go about to extort people but not here not here I stand before God since we started this ministry. I've never extorted anybody. So we preach and give you the truth so you will know it. There's never been a time I sent my, my account number, I give anybody and say, Oh, send this. Oh, if there is anybody, whether he's here or online, let him go on. So I dare that person to go on social media and say it. God just told me, He said, These people, you are, what have they given to you? I say, but God, they are giving to your work. He said, no, not in this case. This one, they need a seed to seal their victory. What do you now say to God in that condition? The only thing you can say is cry for mercy. Because I'll be the last person to go and tell the person. I remember when we started this ministry. The first one year, it was hell. The first two years, it was hellfire. The first one year, hell. The second year, it became hellfire. So we began, I think that was 2020, early 2020 or so. Or 2019, I don't know, but it was beginning of the year. I was in Abuja. I was praying. And God told me, he said, stand up. He said, you need to connect to certain covenants that are already enjoying the blessings you are looking for. You need to connect to them by a seed. And I called our accountant. We emptied the account took a seat to this ministry took a seat to that the account was shut down then god came again and said your own oh yeah i mean you know when your account is breathing with small life at the beginning of the year 5th of january and god said clear everything there how do you survive as a man of god i respect in this country i will not call the name but one day i was thinking every time he wants to teach on wealth and finance there's a vision he will say he had years ago he will share 
and then he will start teaching many of you will know what I'm talking about and then one day I was praying in my house the Holy Spirit came to me and he asked me do you know the meaning of that vision and he told me and from that day when I began to apply it my finances and I will not tell you you know Paul said follow me as I what and that's just the way covenant this is not to extort no you see selfish people cannot please God let me tell you this is not about material things it's about a system God has placed the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that self cannot please God when we hold on to the things that God has given to us and we negate obedience to his divine commands there's no way we can be justified enough to see the blessings of God I'm telling you point blank point blank and when you notice this is wisdom now when you notice you have a peculiar calling from God in the body of Christ you need to die to what I call you need to you need to submit yourself to what I call a life of sacrifices it doesn't end brother it will not end are you hearing me I need to come to us and talk to us it will not end some of us to please sit down some of us started but you stopped halfway and that's the reason why God has stopped to no end to keep rising because God wants to see if you are attached to those things or is him Samuel was a man of sacrifices a man of sacrifices when you see them attack a state three times in one month what gave the bandits guts you think those guys are coming out because they have guns and weapons please be seated you think they have just because they have guns and weapons do you know what nigerian armed forces is it is our soldiers they send to command peacekeeping troops in other countries you think it's because they have supply of weapon you don't know the sacrifices that, that has gone under they understand priesthood that means the savior the, the salvation of nigeria will be that men and women must return back to priesthood we must enact a covenant of sacrifice don't compare yourself to america till tomorrow if america keep cursing god they will prosper you know why because the founding fathers they were things they did on the ground they covenanted the founding fathers of america they covenanted themselves to god and the nation by sacrifice they devoted the nation so much that on their currency it is written god's own country what was the foundation of our own witchcraft idolatry then the british came colonized us raped our women divide and rule and all of that and you think we'll just prosper like that you think so really every military base anybody that is watching this now better hear me every military base better start raising sacrifices because they're coming for you now nowhere maybe the next place is the government house let's we don't pray for that because when you can attack airport attack train attack a military base the next place is the government house a sacrifice Lord, I offer my life to you. Everything I've been through, use it for your glory. Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you. As a pleasing sacrifice, I offer you my life, Lord. I offer you my life. So it's something that if you believe what I'm saying tonight, you have to apply. At the beginning of the year, you'll have to raise such before God. There are certain things God has given to you that you will have to secure it i told you that the source of a thing sustains it 
your marriage is not founded on any covenant of sacrifice that's why there's problem same thing with your relationship i know what the two of you use your money to do <laughs> it's okay to go lick ice cream buy gifts and all but if the two of you don't understand covenant see the devils the demons in nigeria in case you don't you you know we import a lot of things from abroad the demons in africa are real demons the demons are watching you say okay you want to lick ice cream with us what we did to your mother and your grandmother we're coming for you a woman gets married joyous wedding and after two years no child with all the prayer and fasting have you tried a sacrifice Because the first time God gave, a, God gave a barren woman a child, he took sacrifice. God had promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. He came again in Genesis 17. He said, this Sarah, this barren woman, she will bear you. But it looked like it was not coming to pass. Then something happened, chapter 18. And the Lord appeared to Abraham. And he came in form of three men. And Abraham saw them. In the hot sun of the day, he ran to them. He said, please stop aside to my tent. Let me get what you will eat and wash your leg. You don't call that sacrifice. And the Bible didn't say God rejected. God said, do it, we are waiting. Notice that the only thing God said while he was with Abraham there was about Isaac, you know, Sarah's child. But he waited till Abraham had raised an offering. You don't call that an offering, but... Say, Apostle, why my prophecy is not coming to pass? You need spiritual intelligence to know which one can be tied to a seed. Many times when the devil has risen against me, I have used this weapon to withstand him. Many times. I didn't tell you when I said I prayed when my dad was hospitalized. Oh, I didn't tell you the other thing I did. It was sacrifice. And there are many times that people have prayed and interceded for. And I saw that all hell was broken loose on them. And in the cover of darkness, you, you raise some sacrifice that will cause you pain for a long time. And then they will come and share testimony. Ah, he has done for me. And you will just sit down and say, oh, glory to God. You think saying that every prayer God will just... I'm not telling you this. I'm just show, I'm showing you the life. This is it. This is it. That's why till tomorrow, God will forever remain true in Nigeria. You know why? Our spiritual fathers understood this. They understand it very well. Dr. Ora Roberts, a great healing evangelist, years ago, was diagnosed of a very, you know, very, 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 what, what word would I use? A disease. A killer disease he was dying and then one day he spoke to his wife Evelyn Robert or Robert was a leading healing evangelist he will lay hands on people thousands and they'll be healed after all the prayer people came to intercede people laid hands and nothing was happening he called his wife one day say honey how much do we have in our account she says so so and so he said take it and give I need to leave and the Bible says as soon as that seed was sown uh, sorry, the story had it. As soon as the seed was sown. I'm not saying it's everything. But there are some things. There are some times in life. As a family, be wise. To have that covenant of sacrifice. You are still a young girl. Can you covenant your unborn children to God? By sacrifice. Oh, God told you you give birth to a prophet. From the day God told you you are not gotten married, but the enemy has devised a troop, a battalion, that would destroy that boy when he's 12 years. Unfortunately, some of us, our parents didn't know this, and that's the reason why your life was just, is by the mercy of God you are here. And when you say, we have a covering, that covering is sponsored by sacrifice. Can you rise? Let's pray. The greatest sacrifice is your heart. Your heart. Your heart. We are going to surrender to the Lord.
your heart your heart proverbs 23 25 or 26 rather he said my son give me your heart your heart many of us we've not given that heart to god we found a way to be born again and still have our heart glued to other things your heart if you cannot give god your heart you can't give god anything the dealings of god will become hard they will become they will become like an obstacle they will become like a yoke to you because your heart has not been surrendered but tonight we want to lay aside our ambitions our will and pour our heart to god and say lord you are the captain of my life of my heart and of my destiny can you in the next two minutes lift your voice and talk to your maker here i said talk to your maker pray surrender everything that must be surrendered some of us only seek prayer here and there and here and there here and there seeking solution when the greatest solution will be that your heart is offered as a sacrifice to him let him be lord over your heart let him sit and throw many things are in our heart contending for the position of god your relationship your marriage your job your finances and these are things that god gave us can you raise your voice and pray a prayer of surrender to him I let it go before you. I surrender my heart. I offer it as a sacrifice. I offer it as a sacrifice. I offer it as a sacrifice. I offer my life to you. I offer it to you. This pleasing sacrifice. This pleasing sacrifice. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. to him I am the sacrifice both I and all that I have
Hallelujah. I want to make an altar call now and then we'll close tonight. I hope that this message will make meaning to everyone that has heard. But if you are here, you say, Apostle, I'm not born again. I'm not surrendered to the Lord Jesus. I come to church, no problem. I sing the songs in services. I even think that I can speak in tongues. But truly, I don't know Jesus. My life does not look like it is totally surrendered. Or perhaps you used to be born again, all standing everywhere and no movement. Perhaps you were born again and because of certain things you have derailed and you need to be rededicated. You probably may even be in a season of prayer now. But it looks like the heavens are not opening over you. Probably you need to rededicate again. We must give back the most important thing, which is our heart and our lives to Him. I want to make this altar call. If you are among any of this category, I want you to raise your right hand wherever you are. And I'll pray for you tonight. Tonight is a night of surrender. It's a night of sacrifices. The prime of which you are to Him. You want to say yes to Jesus or possibly you want to rededicate your life. Raise your right hand. I'm going to pray for you quickly. Do it now while you have the time. You can't be sure of tomorrow. Some of us, some relationships made us derailed. Right now, you don't really know where you are. Raise your right hand. I want to pray for you. Please lift your right hand very well. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see a few hands. Boldly, I want you to step forward and meet me at the altar. Put your hands together for them. Boldly come forward and surrender to Jesus. Keep clapping till they come. Boldly. Forget about who is around you. You are surrendering to Him. You decide you are no longer running again. You are giving Him everything. It all belongs to you. Oh. Those of you in front, just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I surrender. Have your way. Cleanse me of my sins. Cleanse me of the past. I make a commitment to you to be yours forever. Say, Those of you in the congregation, I want you to stretch your hands towards them and pray for them. Those of you in front, you are truly born again when you surrender your heart to the Lord. Let him be Lord over your heart and Lord over your life. It's a lifetime decision. It's an eternal decision. Enough of the coming and going back. Enough of the coming today and backsliding tomorrow. It's time for the government of heaven to remain the only rule over your life. Those of you in front, put your right hand on your chest. I want you to make this prayer after me. And I want you to mean it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus... I come to you today I surrender to you 
I surrender my heart, my life, and everything to you. I repent of my sins. I ask that you be Lord over my life. And I thank you because you died that I will be saved in Jesus' name. Father, I stretch my hands towards them. And I declare that their sins are forgiven. I declare that they are born again. I pray that you fill them with your spirit and your life. Right now, seal them by the entrance of your spirit into their hearts. Let them never remain the same. Everything that has been the government over their life, lose its place right now. And you will become the governor over their lives. They receive victory against sin, Satan, death, and hell. And they will serve you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, can we say amen?